Today we're going to talk about Emperor and the way they execute some of the chords and the lead lines. So let's take the Loss and Curse of Reverence as an example. <laughs> So if you saw there, my hand was moving across the guitar strings in a more unconventional way of tremolo picking notes. With the Lost and Curse of Reverence, you kind of want to blend the notes together, make them merge them, or make them make the notes sound like a chord almost. And the way you do that is by keeping the notes ringing whilst you're tremolo picking them. So the chord here is just a normal C minor dyad, third fret on A, first finger on D and then you keep the G and B string open. So if I were to play the strum, it's normal, normally strum the chord, it sounds like this. But we don't want that. We want to arpeggiate each note of the chord. Whilst keeping all of the other notes ringing. So you get this really cool wall of sound. That's kind of ascending and descending at the same time. So the way to do that is to just keep all your strings ringing. Don't worry about muting them as much. So that's one of the techniques, just moving and arpeggiating a chord, but keeping the notes ringing as opposed to having one note playing at a time. Now the second part of that takes the same idea where you're moving across different notes of a chord, but instead of making it single notes, you're gonna be strumming a few strings at a time. So if we take the burning shadows of silence. I'm sort of doing the same thing as the Lost and Curse of Reverence, but I'm just tremolo picking a couple more strings whilst I'm doing this. So at the beginning, I'm just taking a B minor bar chord, strumming the lower notes, then gradually moving my hand down, keeping my picking angle and distance the same. Except I'm moving down the strings. So the way to practice that is to just take it nice and slowly. Just do four strums, down, up, down, up, on E, A and D. Then do the same thing on the next few strings down. Until you get to G, B and E. So it'll be strumming E, A, D together, then A, D, G. D, G, B, then G, B, E. That's why Emperor, even more than 20 years ago now, they still kind of keep the sound fresh. By having this really cool moving chord progression. That sounds like it's actually moving as opposed to just as a change. So it's just something to think about when, you, when you're creating and crafting your own riffs. Just By giving your riffs a bit more life as opposed to just strumming and playing the same chords. So another thing that makes Emperor so great is the way they use accents in their chord progressions and their chord changes. So if we take Inoa Satana, for example. See 
see there, I was adding emphasis, and that's what an accent is, it's emphasis. It's a slightly stronger strum or picked note than the rest. And that gives a really cool feel. Now we need to be very careful here because you need to make sure that your playing is very precise, especially with the strumming. Now in Inoa Satana, it's a grouping of six strums. So that's the first thing to get used to. So you just need to count. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the way you practice this is just get used to playing groups of six. One, two, three, two, three, four. And count the same. One, two, three, 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 one. So it's two sets of one, two, three, but your first one is louder. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you can take that with a regular chord, so let's take a G chord. So that's how you that's how you want to practice it. Just take a normal chord and get used to the strumming pattern. Once your right hand becomes more accustomed to accenting, that's when you can learn the Emperor riffs. That's just a grouping of six, but just sped up. And adding percussion or percussiveness to your playing is so important. It's so important. That's what's missing in a lot of playing because it's all well and good going. But if you add some groove to it, Completely different feel. And it makes your playing so much more impactful. These accents are so important. And another song that uses this Emperor strumming pattern, the accenting in groups of six, is The Loss and Curse of Reverence. Again, we're going to go back to that song, The Loss and Curse of Reverence, because there's so many cool ideas, chord changes, and riffs. To learn. So if we take the mid section of the song, play the next bit for you guys. And I'll play sample spot. Now, if you want to learn that, book a lesson. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Thank you to my new subscribers. I um, hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something really cool today.